The National Assembly Joint Committee on the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, matters has proposed a review of the provision of the Electoral Act which pegged the eligibility of a voter at 18 years. Now, the reason that's been given has to do with young girls who got married before they turned 18. Um, the chairman of the Senate Committee on INEC, Senator Gabiru, uh, Kabiru Gaya and his counterpart in the House of Representatives, Aisha uh, Duku, tabled the proposal uh, before the Technical Committee on Electoral Reforms on Wednesday. We want to have a conversation um, about that. Uh, at some point, the INEC boss did say during the conversation that uh, the law hasn't yet recognized that anybody uh, beyond, below, below, below the age of 18 uh, should be voting. But the, the woman, uh, the, uh, Aisha said, no, you can't just throw it away. It's something that needs to be considered. Should we be considering having girls who are yet to be 18, still young, to be voting? Should, we, uh, should they be considered as adults? So that, that's, that's, you know, that's, that is, that's the uh, question. Are they adults really? because they are married? Yeah, exactly. uh, joining us to help uh, unravel uh, this um, seeming uh, naughty situation um, is uh, social commentator and public affairs analyst uh, Adeni Kunu. Thank you very much for joining us. We also have um, legal practitioner Chris Nwakobia uh, joining us from Abuja. Thank you as well for joining us, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, All right we, we didn't seem to hear from uh, Mr. Mr. Kuno as soon as we established that we will um, reintroduce him uh, again. All right. I'm, I'm going to kick off with uh, Mr. Nwakobia. Um, thanks for joining us once again. I, I want to. Um, ask your thoughts. I'm, I'm guessing this is, you know, a very brilliant idea. You know, this way we can have more people get involved with the electoral process. Um, we can, of course, get more people, you know, to choose who uh, will be, you know, their, their, their public office holders. So it sounds like a very fantastic idea. Do you, do you agree? I disagree completely. I, I think that what uh, those who are proposing, um, if you like, a reduction in the age, because that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, a reduction in the voting age uh, are being intelligent by half. I also think that those who are trying to validate uh, um, child marriage uh, are being intelligent by half. Uh, the Electoral Act did clearly provide, as in most clients, for the minimum age, minimum voting age to be 18. And um, the Constitution has that understanding uh, across the world. Uh, some other clients have tinkered with uh, raising the bar to 21. Uh, but what we have almost universally is the age 18. And if the Nigerian senators and some legislators are saying that, and don't forget that most of those who are making that proposal of position. Uh, sim uh, from the northern areas where, uh, with all sense of respect, uh, child marriage is almost a tradition. But I do want to say, and clearly without a provocation, that um, uh, the INET chairman had clearly said that it is not something he intends to bring before the National Assembly. And uh, they got angry because it was like uh, he dismissed it with a wave of the hand. But I want to say clearly that uh, beyond what we're doing, which I think should be considered an academic exercise for the good of our country, um, it should be deemed um, a non sequential. It should be deemed something we cannot even uh, deepen uh, debates on. Because uh, if we do, inadvertently, we shall be approving, validating child marriage. If we do, Inadvertently, we shall be compromising the electoral process. Uh, if we do, inadvertently, we should be asking those who want to win election by hook or crook to go marry younger women uh, and girls who are not uh, of the virgin age. And I think that this is something we must find. All right, I'm going to quickly, you know, get you to speak on this also. And of course, uh, from what you said, I, I saw somewhere in 2015, Nigeria had an estimated 6 million girls who were married at the age of 15 and 36 million by the age of 18 in the Northwest and Northeast regions. Um, but there's, I, I want your thoughts on what the constitution really says. Is there a part of the constitution that says that a woman who is married shall be deemed full of age? 
Um, does that part of the constitution, you know, in any way come into play here? I think you're, you're um, intelligently aiding my answer because uh, what you have just done is put before the Nigerian people the subterfuge, the perfidy and the mendacity of life of those who are pushing for that amendment. I say clearly uh, and advisedly also that uh, when we discuss these issues, we shall inadvertently be given um, validation to those who are involved in the criminality of marrying underage girls. That's point number one. Point number two, there is no provision of the law that says that when a woman is married below the age of 18, she, she reaches adulthood. Point number three, when we tinker with issues that, because you just read out the statistics. If uh, the age uh, the year 2020, you will have about 36 million underage wives. Pardon I mean, my use of words. Then anybody who allows those young girls to vote because they're mothers uh, shall uh, inadvertently have given the electoral victory to anybody who uh, is perhaps from the north or who shares the sentiments that allows it. And I want to say clearly that uh, the country that we're looking for, the, the beloved society that we want to create, that country that the, the, the child in Karunamuda, the child in Eke, the child in Abiyokuta, the one in Busa, and the girl in Ibusa once, uh, will, will be destroyed, will be, will be thrown away. All right, Let, let's bring I, in uh, I, Mr. Adeni Kunu now. Uh, let's get his perspective as well. Um, we're talking about underage marriage here uh, from going by our constitution. So I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Kunu, what is the implication of this recommendation against the fight to stop underage marriage in this country? Let's look at this together. In 2003, the Child Rights Act was passed. And since 2003 until now, 11 northern states have refused to adopt it. The fundamental position, position of, the child, of the Child Rights Act is to prevent that marriage. But 11 northern states, and some of them are PhD holders, have gotten us. They have refused to adopt it. This constitution is also a fraud because the core issues that should have allowed the entire Nigeria operate the same kind of constitution has given the North opportunity to operate Sharia law in a country that is described as secular. It is also in this country that they told us that there are educationally disadvantaged states. So when I get into the university for medicine, compulsorily I have to score 280, 290. But somebody will score 170 in the north, and they'll give the person the same admission. And the people in the south with forehead per human being. So this fraud have continued. And today again, we find how they are gradually wanting to force their illegal practice on Nigeria. Why is, why is it that, a, don't forget what, it is not only Gaya, Aisha Duku, a woman that I was expecting to condemn child marriage at Lali, if she was given, uh, if she was out in marriage at 13, will she have become a senator? So it is good for her to allow the illegal practice of giving children in marriages, and our own children are probably abroad as we speak. The whole thing is fraud, as far as I'm concerned. So nobody should come and tell me, I'm really pissed off, because this is how the North continues to take advantage of the South. But and it, because it, many Mr. Staff... Kunu, if I may interject, it, the, the, it, if it becomes law, I will come to you, um, Abarisa, in a bit, but there is a part to this conversation um, the lady you mentioned, Aisha Duku, uh, said in response to uh, Yakubu's comments that it is already in the Electoral Act Amendment submitted um, in the last assembly. So my question is, um, it's not about the North now, because if this becomes law, 
it will affect all parts of Nigeria. Isn't it? Mr. Kunu, I'm still with you. Are you with me? Yes, I'm still if, with if, you. Yes. If, we, if it becomes law, it is not about every part of Nigeria because every state, for instance, that has adopted the Child Rights Act has already agreed that they, they cannot give their children, their girl child, a marriage when they are less than 18 years. One of the last states to adopt it in the South was the Boeing state. I can't really know what is wrong with the Boeing in the Southeast because even if you are talking about some of the poorest states in this country, a Boeing state is part of it. But a Boeing state eventually adopted it. The North Central state adopted it. The same region, is it? Now, 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 please let me tell you this. The same state that are undergoing heavy problems of Boko Haram and banditry are the same states state that want to continue to live in 2020 as if they are in the 13th century. The North must realize that for every law, especially Northwest and Northeast, that it operates, that doesn't move the respective state forward is a problem to Nigeria. So if we allow this to fly, eventually they are going to return the states that have adopted the Child Rights Act to perhaps 13th century BC. Let me also tell you this fraud, the fraud in this country. Although the Constitution doesn't recognize geopolitical zones, it is the same fraud that made them create and gave not west seven states. They gave not east six states. Other states across the other region, other regions across the country, they gave them six states. They now gave southeast five states. Why would that happen? All right, hold so on. This um... is complete fraud. Uh, Mr. Right. Kunu, I get, I get your point, um, but I, I, let's go back to Chris Wukobia. Um, I don't want us to ignore the part of the Constitution that actually says, and I, I'm going to read it out uh, from the Nigerian Constitution, Section 29, uh, Subsection 4, I believe it says, for the purposes of Subsection 1 of this section, a full age means the age of 18 years and above. It then also says, any woman who is married shall be deemed of full age. Um, and that means any woman who is married shall be considered as an 18-year-old year old. Um, and is eligible to vote. So, uh, Chris Wonkobi, I want you to go back there and tell us how this can be countered in any way. Yes, you've already mentioned that we have a challenge with underage, um, uh, underage marriage in Nigeria. Um, we well, would, of course, get to, to recognize that. We would, of course, get to a place where we need to you know, discuss what, you know, the constitution or which of them should be the grand norm of the country, the constitution or our cultures and our tribes and which, which we really should, you know, respect more. So tell us, Chris Wokombia, how this part of the constitution can be countered in this conversation. We have a constitution that's fundamentally flawed on several counts. Now you just quoted section 29. You talked about the first uh, uh, section you mentioned clearly states that of full age, full age should be 18. And then it goes further to tell you that any woman who is married, that is the same law. We're talking about the same constitution that says that you're only first of full age at 18. And then our laws does, do not, child act uh, right, does not, child right, uh, does not a lady, a girl. So our constitution should be our grown up, primarily. But when you have phenomenons, I'll give you a practical instance, like Kunu noted when he started. You have a constitution that provides uh, for two different legal regimes in one country. The first is a common law, so to say, and then the second is a Sharia law in one country. You pride in your nation as a secular nation, and then you have a law
that creates for two unique legal systems, one for the North and one for the South. And you ask yourself what, what nation does that. Ghana has as much, uh, almost about the same ratio, ratio of Christians and Muslims. Ghana, the preponderant names you hear are Islamic names, but they have one common legal system. You have the same thing in Benin Republic. What am I trying to say? If we want to work together and grow a nation that should be predicated on social justice and what is right and right, then we must be fair and we must learn to call a spade by its name. Now let me go to uh, exactly what uh, the Electoral Act provides for the age 18. You must be 18 before you can vote. If the Constitution is saying that when you are married, does our laws envisage that a child should be married? Does our law envisage that a girl under 18 should be married? If most of the states of a country has dom have domesticated the Child Rights Act, it obviously means that we live in a nation where the pre preponderant number have said that we cannot marry out our girls when they are below 18. So I want to say, and that's, I'm, I'm, I'm taking two questions along. So the lady who's there, that the law will not pass. They cannot pass that law because we will not allow it. Then regarding the age 18, all over the world, we are not a banana republic. We are not a nation of uncivilized people. And we must insist on that which is proper right and right to be our national minimum. No child, whether married at 12 and is now uh, and is under 18, no law, no law will be passed by the National Assembly to validate their right to vote. Because right. the right to vote, the Electoral Act will not confer adulthood on those young girls. The age of marriage is 18 and above. Anything beyond, be, be, before that, anything that happens that alters that will not be allowed into our law. Because we're not a country, we're not living in, 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 in the medieval times. All we're right. in a civilized um, world. In, and this country let's, let's must bring propound... in Mr. Kunu, sir. Let's, let's bring in Mr. Kunu and take his perspective from another angle. And that's the fact that the people that are pushing this uh, conversation are lawmakers people that are supposed to know better. What bothers you that two prominent figures of the National Assembly are championing the possibility of underage marriage and voting in this country? Okay, okay. Uh, okay, let, let, let me begin by saying this. You know, one of the challenges that many um, citizens of the Northeast and Northwest have is that they try not to look at the things that are prevalent in major Muslim societies of the world. For instance, in this 2020, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, the capital of Islam in the world, positioned herself by saying, if you are not 18, you cannot get married. If you go to places like Iran, Islamic Republic of Iran, you go to Indonesia, the country that has the largest number of concentrated Muslims in one place in the whole, in the whole world. These things that our northerners in this country embrace is not founded in countries that have, that have had Islam long before some of our, some of our, some of our people. So a situation where they try to be holier than the Pope, it angers me, to say the least. And it is also giving this country a lot of problems. Now let's say this. Are most of these lawmakers not aware of the fistula cases that affect most of the underage girls, that they are not talking about what? About, about voting. Let me shock you. In 2010, I lived in the North. No, I was in, I lived, I was in the North. I did my registration for voter card at a place called Samaru in Zaria. Now, I saw a lot of children. When I say children, and I mean children, they were on the line. And I told my friend, who is from the north, north central here, from Kogi, I said, what is happening? Can't you tell this INEC uh, guy to stop this thing? The guy said, bros, leave them all. They go just begin shout the vex for you, won't fight you now. 
So what I'm saying is, what these lawmakers want to steal into our law is a common practice in the north. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that it is peculiar only to the north to have underage voters, but it is much more. If you took a percentage, it is seventy percent in the north and thirty percent elsewhere. So All if right. you go again to 2011 election, during the election we had, press, um, the, a particular TV station here covered the elections in the north. We have children as young as 10, as young as 12, Mr. Kuhn, participating you can in the election, in and they didn't say anything to it. Yes. So my concern is they are only trying as much as possible to come to validate what has been happening and that they have been going away with. Let me tell you another interesting part. We know the way Nigerians feel now and their reaction to the current leadership. Perhaps they have done a lot of permutation and realize that the 2023 election might not be favorable. And they feel that because they didn't get the right bargain from here, people might not bring them back to power in 2023. So they are looking for one way or the other. I'm just saying that there could be a theory of that. Right. that, is, uh, that, is, that, that is, uh, so I'm saying, Mr. we should not yeah. allow people... All right. we're, we're, we're almost out of time, unfortunately. Um, I know this is a very I've emotive. Seen that, I saw that theory online also. Yeah, uh, but let, let, let's not uh, push um, uh, things that we are not 100% sure about. Uh, but thank you, as always, for your very incisive contribution to the conversation. Thank you very much for having us. Chris and of course, uh, thank you also. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chris? Is it still there? Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, wanted to say thank you uh, for joining us on the breakfast. The pleasure is mine. I, I, I personally, um, I would just say that um, as shocking as this conversation is, it's it's extremely important, and it's a good thing that you pointed out that um, for you, what one thing that takes you off is the fact that it's uh, lawmakers that are championing this, you know, this whole idea. Um, it's a conversation that must be had and it must be it must be told across Nigeria. Nobody should not be aware the, the, that these the, things this, are this, Yes, I know the advent of the, you know, social media and the internet and access to um, um, information has made our young people get enlightened a lot more earlier than it used to be the case, than uh, used to be the case in the yes. past. But... A child is still a child that should be allowed to grow, enjoy the, the, the period, that experience for that period before pushing them. Getting married and having kids is a whole lot of responsibility. It's, it's outright it's abuse. It's a whole lot of and, responsibility. And there's there's so. no other way to describe it. It's outright abuse. Yes, it is. Of a, a, a teenager. Um, they and we have, like, you know, I, I wouldn't be, I'm not shocked anyway, because we know that we have senators who are married to underage girls. Uh, several times it has made the news. We made a lot of noise, as is usual, with Nigerians. And then the matter died down. Uh, probably that marriage is still on. He allegedly said he was going to wait until she was 18 before you were, you know... It's still abuse, Felicity, regardless of how we the painted. marriage. But this is not something... Um, that our analysts agree with. And I'm sure a whole lot of Nigerians find this unacceptable. We'll keep the conversation going here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us. Uh, when we come back, we have a little bit more to go. We're going to be talking kidnappings. And if that is the next big business in Nigeria as it stands, it's right here on The Breakfast. Good morning. Stay with us.